The new HDMI 2.1 products are starting to ship. And it's important that you understand how they work and why they do what they do and how to prepare for it. First off, let's discuss a little bit about the new ecosystem. HDMI 2.1 has been advertised as a new 48 gigabit bandwidth system. And this is certainly freaking out a whole lot of people and manufacturers. But don't get hung up on the 48 number because it's not gonna affect you anytime soon. So let's talk about what you're really gonna see. The first stop point for HDMI 2.1 is 24 gigabits. Now, currently we're at 18 and that sounds like a big leap, but it really isn't, and here's why. The big change going forward is how we use the cable. When you look at a traditional HDMI cable of any iteration, HDMI 1.0 to HDMI 2.0 A or B, there are four high-speed channels, D0, D1, D2, and D3. However, for its entire history, only the first three of those four have actually been used for high-speed data. That is the six gigabit part in this iteration. The fourth channel, D3, is only used for the clock, and it's about one-tenth the bandwidth, so it doesn't have to do much. Now, what this means to you is pretty much every cable you've ever purchased, with the exception of ours, for example, you will have problems moving forward, and here's why. Under HDMI 2.1, that fourth channel for the first time becomes a full bandwidth high-speed channel. That means the existing cable, if it's properly built, will go from 18 to 24 gigabits just by plugging it in a new piece of gear. Now, as mentioned, the vast majority of cables are not there, so you do have to be careful. How and why is this happening is pretty simple. In the past, HDMI broke the colors out as we've always done RGB, red, green, and blue, D0, D1, and D2. D3, as mentioned, was just the clock. However, now, under the 2.1 arrangement, every one of those channels, D0, D1, D2, and D3, gets an aggregate of red, green, and blue with its own clock. This way they can actually match the necessary bandwidth between the source, the cable, and the display so they can back it down easier if need be. However, if you have a good quality cable, again, see ours, this will not be an issue. Where we're going with HDMI 2.1 is a whole new list of feature sets. First off is 4K 120. One of the concerns we've had with 4K as the resolution's gotten higher is it becomes easier to see the differences in frame rates. 24 and 30 frames per second with the level of resolution we have can look choppy. So they've gone to 60. And if you've seen Billy Lynn's long halftime walk, you'll see there's a more fluid aspect to it. But they want to go even further, particularly for live sports. They want to get it to 120 so that the action looks real, not animated or cartoonish. Available within the same bandwidth as 4K 120 is 8K 60. Now, this past year at CES, a number of panels were released that have the 8K capability. So you have even smaller pixels inside of a given area to give you a crisper, sharper picture. However, you do have to drop the refresh rate to get that additional pixel count within the rated bandwidth. Lastly is 10K. This is primarily for computers and animators, but it allows you to have a single format to go to a much higher bandwidth. Next up is Dynamic HDR. HDR has been out about three years now, and it has been without question the biggest change we have seen in high definition in the last 20 years, because it gives you much greater levels between black and bright. However, the only drawback to it is the levels are static, meaning it's one level for the entire panel. This changes under 2.1. It becomes dynamic, meaning each pixel or each sub-pixel group can get its own HDR information and content. So you get an even better control for more 3D-like effect. This will take it even further and works hand in hand with where we're going with HLG on the live broadcast side, hybrid log gamma, to give you that effect in broadcast. Next up is enhanced audio return channels. This one's pretty cool because it gives you Dolby Atmos backwards over the HDMI cable. This has not been possible up to this point because the earlier versions of HDMI only supported basic multi-channel Dolby Digital 5.1 or DTS 5.1. eARC will take it to full Atmos capability, backwards over the HDMI channel to a soundbar or to an AVR. 
Next up is variable refresh rate. This is for gamers, Xbox One X or whatever's next, PlayStation, whatever's next, or PCs. This allows the processor and the display to increase frame rate or lower frame rate as needed for a given sequence in the game. If you're in a high motion, they can increase frame rate with the ability to decrease color slightly so you get a smoother action and then decrease it with more colors if you're looking at a more static screen. And this will be handled over the HDMI cable, not as a static number. Auto low latency mode. This is the deal with issues, again, between source and displays for both audio and video to get a better sync. Quick media switching is inside of the EDID side, also known as QMS. This, in theory, will allow your display to switch between input sources quicker. These are the primary changes between HDMI 2.0 and 2.1. Now, let's talk about cables and what's gonna happen with them. If you have a cable that has been properly built with four high-speed channels, equal high-speed channels, you're set to go for the 24 gigabits right now. Meaning the first step into HDMI 2.1, you don't have to change your cabling. In fact, if you use our MHX cables or MHY cables, VLOX Active T-Series, VLOX Passive Series, or fiber products, you are all ready to go right now into the next iteration of HDMI because they are four six gigabit high-speed channels on all of those products. Now, depending on length, you may need to add a repeater like the GA1 or GA2. On MHX, that's over seven and a half meters, and on VLOX Passive, it's over 10 meters. But you're set to go. This means that you don't have to change the cabling that's in the wall. This is very important because the vast majority of other cables on the market do not do this. They only go to 18. The fourth channel is basically a fraud. It only has to do a tenth the speed of the first three, D0, D1, and D2. This will be very important to your installations, to your dealers, and to your customers. Thank you very much for viewing and listening. If you have any more questions, please contact us at 866-839-9187. Select tech, and we are readily available for you. Please give us a call. Thank you.